Live from downtown Macon, this is WGXA News Live on YouTube. Good evening, Middle Georgia. I'm Amanda Peralta. And I'm Greg Lloyd. Amanda and I thank you for watching WGXA News at 530. Well, it was another hot day across middle Georgia. I mean, it feels like every time we step outside, it's mm. sweltering. Like, yes, actually. And Amanda, you know, last <laughs> night before the 11 o'clock, we stepped outside Chief Meteorologist uh, Ryan Stennett, and you know, you could actually feel the heat still soaked into the brick of the building. 100%. Oh yeah. Well, he, Ryan described it earlier as oppressive heat, and right. I think I have to agree with that. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. There's, There's a fly in the studio. I was thinking, I hope that doesn't come get you. <laughs> yeah. No, oppressive for sure, and it's only going to get worse, which oh. is the bad part about all of this. And again, it's all because of this heat dome off towards their west. It's going to start making its way eastward and as it does, temperatures are on their way up. Now it is a hot Tuesday evening across middle Georgia. We got widespread low to mid 90s. The hot spot right now, Montezuma sitting at 95. Factor in the humidity, which isn't that bad today. It's going to get much worse, but the feels like temperature all locations below 100, but dew points will be climbing later this week. The temperatures will be climbing, and that means it's going to feel even worse outside. 93 in Mercer University on our Wilson and Bryant's Heating and Air Skycast Network. A west northwest wind at about 10 miles per hour. No rain showing up on the radar. Through the evening, quiet and calm. It's just going to be very warm out and about. But for more about the heat, here's meteorologist Ryan Morando. With all of the heat coming for this week, the feels like temperature or the heat index is a big part of it. So let me explain what that is again. Let's say it's a normal hot day outside. The air temperature is around 90 degrees and our bodies in this hot weather want to sweat. And when the sweat evaporates off of our body, that's what cools us down. However, when we have a lot of the moisture in the air like we do with dew points, say around 75 degrees, that's that tropical air mass. With these conditions in place, the relative humidity value would be about 60%. So you have all the moisture in the air, your body still sweats. However, it's not able to evaporate as effectively and therefore not cooling you off as much as if it had more air to evaporate into. So instead of it being like 90 degrees, our body feels that as 100 and feels like temperatures could easily make it into the triple digits as we approach the weekend. Thank you, Ryan Mirando. And now is a great time to download that WGXA weather app to keep track of the high temperatures throughout the week. And Chief Meteorologist Ryan Stinnett will be back shortly with your full 10 day forecast. And as you heard both the Ryan say moments ago, temperatures are becoming very hot and rising across the mid state. That's right. And with dangerous temperatures on the way, we want to know if the heat will affect your plans for the week. You can let us know on our interactive poll by scanning the QR code below. In the meantime, our Carlos Stevens talked to a doctor today about ways that you can beat the heat. Summer is here, which means the potential for dangerous heat. I spoke to a local doctor from Warner Robins who says there are several signs to look for if you're experiencing heat exhaustion. Nausea, vomiting, fatigue. Other signs include increase in thirst, confusion, and cool, clammy skin. She says if not treated, it could land you into the hospital. However, there are several things that could avoid a trip to the emergency room, like staying in a cool place where there's AC. If you don't have an inside job, there's also options for you. Drinking lots of fluids, also frozen fruits and um, frozen um, drinks. She says they typically see an uptick in patients during the summer, specifically athletes. And she says parents should never leave kids in the car. Making Bib Corner Leon Jones says he also reminds people to not forget about the elderly. But if you got mail that's running out in the mailbox mm -hmm. and that person is not in the hospital or not in a convalescent facility, something's wrong. But Jones says he has another concern. You know, people want to cool down and they want to go to the lake and they want to go to swim. And I'm going to say this, Amoson Park, Amoson River is dangerous. Amoson River Park is dangerous. Let me be clear when I say that. It is flat out dangerous. I, I, you know, there, there are life jackets available and I get it. But Jones says there's better options. Well, you got Tobasovsky. Okay. But I'm going to tell you something. Amoson and River is dangerous. And looking right now at the poll results, some of you have voted as we uh, were playing the report there. 
57% of you right now say yes, you will change your plans this week because of the heat, while 43% of you say no. Scan the QR code and keep participating in our interactive poll. Well, a local organization is pleading for volunteers after Sunday's powerful storms destroy their corn crop. Our Brianna Cook went to see the progress that's going on today. Brianna? Greg and Amanda, the once flattened corn crop is now standing tall thanks to the help from several volunteers. The Brookdale corn is back in shape after 15 volunteers came to the rescue. The crops were knocked over during a severe storm Sunday night. The howling winds approached 60 miles per hour as the storms pushed through. The garden manager, Susan Fisher, says she tried to fix it herself and realized it was all too much for one person. All of this corn behind me was laying flat on the ground. Uh, it is so close to harvest. I tried to myself get the corn to stand up but it was just it was flat mm -hmm. and I knew when, as soon as I did one or two I was like I need more arms. The Brookdale Resource Center serves as a transitional housing and resource center for people experiencing homelessness in middle Georgia. Fisher says they started the garden back in April to provide more nutritional food to the homeless. They're here for 90 days. They go through some classes and some some counseling to help get them back on their feet. Well, along with that, they have to eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's why we, uh, the mayor decided we wanted to put this garden in there because they're not getting, you know, typically, uh, they're not gonna get fresh food fruit and vegetables. The first crop of the garden was planted just three months ago and since then almost 600 pounds of fruit and vegetables have been harvested. Deborah Goss volunteered today and she says she believes the garden is an important community resource. It makes me feel like it's absolutely a need. It's very hard for people to get fresh good food and to eat food that tastes like food and not like a cardboard box is really important and but it's difficult it's not always available for everybody if you can't get to a fresh market or get to a farmer's market so yeah i think it's important volunteers are still needed to help run the garden from the day-to-day -day task you can find out more information on our website at wgxa.tv Reporting live in Macon, Brianna Cook, WGXA News. All right, thank you, Brianna. Glad to see Middle Georgia comes through once again to help Brookdale. Well, Senator John Ossoff is trying to encourage Georgia peach farmers and get them some help after a tough year. Ossoff says he's working on securing disaster relief aid for peach producers after a late freeze this year killed up to 90% of the state's peach crop. The senator says it's important for Washington to help farmers financially when they face catastrophes that are so far beyond their control. If we are able to move a emergency supplemental package to help Georgia peach growers who are impacted by this freeze, it's likely the Congress will look at other urgent needs in agriculture here in Georgia and across the country that have been impacted by natural disasters. Ossoff says he's unsure right now how much aid may come for peach farmers, but he said the United States Ag Secretary has declared the March freeze a disaster. In local crime, Cordial police are investigating after an early morning shooting that leaves two people hospitalized. Police say they got the call just before 2 this morning about a shooting on West 23rd Avenue. Officers found a man there with multiple gunshot wounds. They later found another man nearby also suffering from several gunshot wounds. Both men were taken to a ho local hospital for treatment before being transferred to a larger hospital for more intensive care. Police have not released the names of the victims. If you know anything about the case, contact the Cordial Police Department. And in Macon, deputies say this man is facing strong armed robbery charges after he attempted to carjack a woman on Monday. Investigators say they were called to a business on 1st Street just after 10 in the morning, where the victim says she was sitting in her vehicle outside her workplace while on a break. When she tried to leave the vehicle, she says that Leon Sills was lying next to that SUV and grabbed her leg. The victim tells deputies that Sills then tried to snatch her out of the SUV and grab her keys. He eventually was able to pull her out and locked himself inside until deputies arrived and took him into custody. And the FBI is releasing a statement on the recent anti-Semitic actions here in Macon and Warner Robins, saying in part that the Bureau is prepared to investigate the instances if evidence of a potential federal violation is found. But they also add it's important to note 
They don't investigate anything other than criminal activity, and they can't initiate an investigation based on race, ethnicity, nationality, religion, or even exercise of the First Amendment. The mother and father accused of starving their 10 year old son will remain locked up. A Spalding County judge determined Tyler and Krista Schindley are flight risk and might try to intimidate witnesses. Police arrested the pair after the boy was found walking to a store to get food last month. He weighed just 36 pounds at the time. Prosecutors say the parents denied him food on purpose and also locked him in a bedroom with no access to food, clothes, lights or toilet paper. His 20 year old stepbrother was also arrested. Dodge County Sheriff's Office says a search from the air led to the discovery of hundreds of marijuana plants being illegally grown. Authorities say they discovered 72 marijuana plants across a stretch of property on Thursday. Investigators say as officers moved in, a man identified as Clyde Lamb moved out. Now he has an arrest warrant for him. The Sheriff's Office, the Governor's Task Force and Department of Natural Resources agents joined together for this operation. Now that was not the only bust in Dodge County. A partnership between the Sheriff's Office and the Oconee Drug Task Force got a large amount of drugs off the street. Agencies cocaine, crack, heroin and ecstasy along with guns and more than $11,000 in cash. Officers arrested three people who were blocked into the Dodge County Dale. And tonight we're learning more about yesterday's fire at the Patrician Apartments on Forest Hill Avenue. The Making Bed Fire Department says they responded to a kitchen fire at one of the apartments and were able to quickly put out the flames. The department says there were no injuries reported, but nearby apartments did experience some smoke and water damage. The cause of the fire is still listed as accidental. The Bibb County School System is looking to fill open positions at a recruitment fair today. The district is searching for bus drivers, nutrition workers, custodians, police officers and more to help out at our local schools. District officials say they want to involve more of the community in the school system and hope to recruit locally. Um, we invest in our people. Uh, we um, love for our people to grow in their positions and, and to um, go into um, other positions if they're so interested. Um, and yeah, we're just a great place to work. Head to our website at WGXA.TV for more on the jobs they're looking to fill. Georgia Senators Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff announced an almost $5 million investment in Baldwin County for the Oconee Heights streetscape and safety improvement projects. Now the 49 point or the $4.9 million grant, I should say, will be used to add pedestrian pathways, complete sidewalk connections, and install solar-powered lighting, as well as solving an infrastructure issue by replacing three felling culverts. The grant was made possible through the bi-structure, uh, bipartisan infrastructure law. And Monroe County has secured almost $800,000 to repair the old Brent Road Bridge. The bridge has been closed since 2022 due to structural issues that became a safety concern for the community. The project aims to replace the existing bridge with a prefabricated structure to restore access and mitigate flooding issues. The funds are just a portion of the $17.3 million of Georgia transportation bank loans and grants approved by Governor Brian Kemp to support seven transportation infrastructure projects around the state of Georgia. Senator Raphael Warnock announcing over $1 billion will be coming to Georgia to expand high-speed internet access. The Broadband Equity Access and Deployment, or BEAD, program works to get reliable high-speed access, particularly in rural areas. BEAD also aims to make access affordable for all income levels. Well, a report out Tuesday says Jeffrey Epstein was able to kill himself in jail due to careless but not criminal behavior. That determination is from the Justice Department's Office of the Inspector General. It says multiple employees failed to conduct rounds when Epstein was at the New York City Metropolitan Correctional Center in 2019. The report says Epstein should have been roomed with a fellow inmate since he was on suicide watch and he shouldn't have had extra linens. The medical examiner says he used them to hang himself. Epstein's death 35 days after his arrest on charges of sex trafficking minors is a source of conspiracy theories and intrigue. Two guards on duty the night of Epstein's death later admitted to falsifying records. They agreed to perform community service as a part of a deferred prosecution with the Department of Justice. The Supreme Court struck down a push by North Carolina Republican state legislators to draw their own congressional map without any interference from local courts. Lauren Blanchard explains the case from Washington. 
legislators draw up their congressional districts and set their election rules without the state's courts stepping in. Tuesday, the Supreme Court said no in a six to three decision. And what today's decision basically does is clarify that state courts, specifically state Supreme Courts, still have a role to play in overseeing election laws. In 2021, North Carolina's GOP state lawmakers argued the independent state legislator theory allowed them to redraw the congressional map without any judicial oversight. It involves not just redistricting laws, but really almost any law that somehow impacts federal elections. That doctrine was rejected by the state Supreme Court in 2022, who said the original GOP map was quote, a partisan outlier intentionally and carefully designed to maximize Republican advantage. Those judges then redrew the voting boundaries. Unhappy with the ruling, conservatives asked the U.S. Supreme Court justices to weigh in. Chief Justice John Roberts wrote the majority decision against the GOP lawmakers saying, the elections clause does not insulate state legislatures from the ordinary exercise of state judicial review. The ACLU celebrating the decision, quote, in our system, there is no room for a rogue legislature that can violate its own founding charter without any checks from other branches of government. This is likely not the last time we'll hear of the issue of redrawing district maps before the 2024 elections. Another similar redistricting case in Ohio is pending. In Washington, Lauren Blanchard, WGXA News. Along with the building heat, we're going to have air quality issues. We're seeing air quality alerts starting to be issued for Atlanta and over towards Birmingham. And again, it's that wildfire smoke from those Canadian wildfires, but also the stagnant air mass that's going to be moving into the area as that big dome of high pressure slides east. The three H's hazy, hot and humid weather by the weekend. We're going to be talking dangerous heat levels. That means heat index values over 100, likely approaching 110 and the actual air temperature temperature will be in the upper 90s. Now across middle Georgia, no heat alerts just yet, but each day we've been watching heat alerts continue to expand off towards the east from the west. Got an excessive heat watch across much of Alabama while a heat advisory down across North Florida. And I think by the time we get to the weekend, we'll either see a heat advisory or maybe even an excessive heat warning issued for portions of middle Georgia. So go ahead and get ready for that. Again, it's all thanks to this area of high pressure, this dome of hot air as it slides off towards the east. It's going to be building hotter temperatures. Also, we have to watch around these areas of heat. A lot of times thunderstorms will develop and they'll ride around this edge. It's called the ring of fire, and that's likely what we're going to be dealing with as we head into Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Maybe even some of those strong storms we dealt with this past weekend. But again, the main story is going to be the heat mid to upper 90s each and every day. Again, these are the actual air temperatures. It's going to be feeling much hotter with those higher humidity levels. Don't forget. Saturday is the 80th anniversary Independence Day celebration down in Warner Robins. It'll be hot. You'll definitely want to take some water to stay cool. There could be an isolated thunderstorm or two. We'll be updating this forecast each and every day. Hopefully no issues as far as the radar and active storms. Again, quiet tonight, tomorrow through most of the day Thursday. When we get to Thursday, we're going to have to watch things towards our north. We could get one of those complexes of storms dropping south, and that could bring us some stronger storms late Thursday. We'll keep an eye on it, but again, our main concern will be the heat the next several days as we're going to be flirting with the century mark on Thursday. Even as we roll into the weekend, those hot temperatures will persist. Fourth of July looks pretty routine for middle Georgia and your Harrison's Body Shop Fishing Game forecast has multiple peaks in the good category tomorrow. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Gary Thigpen, and we're here again at the Bibb County Animal Services in Macon. And folks, I just want to say thank you all. We get so many reports, not only from Elvin and the folks here, but other agencies around. Uh, some beautiful dogs finding some forever homes. And we have a beautiful dog we're going to tell you about today. I'm joined with Elvin and Audrey. And who do we have today, Elvin? Uh, this is Dooley. Dooley's about a year old, uh, 53 pounds, very playful, um, very loving. He loves very. belly rubs. And uh, he's lap pit mix um, very good boy and you know most of these dogs that come in are very loving and they they're just looking for a really good home because of unfortunate situations that happen to them and you said 
Uh, Dooley is a male, about one year old, mm -hmm. and uh, you said the, maybe has a little lab in him, maybe? Yeah, I would say some, somewhere around the lab pit mix. Mm -hmm. um, you can probably tell because of his size, the lab size. Mm -hmm. But other than that, he's just a cuddle bug. And look at that. Look how loving he is. He loves to receive love. He wants to give love to your family. So if someone would like to adopt Dooley, how do they do, go about doing that, Well, Elvin? they can contact me at 478-972-4975, or they can reach us through Facebook. All right, let's make Dooley another success story here in Middle Georgia. Let's find him a really good home. Thank you so much, Elvin and Audrey. Well, how does the idea of drinking recycled urine and sweat sound? Well, not appealing at all. But that's what NASA is working on doing inside the International Space Station. The agency has announced its engineers have found a way to recycle those liquids from astronauts on the ISS. They say while the idea might make some people squeamish, it's a way to meet one of astronauts' basic needs, water without resupply missions from Earth. Each crew member needs about a gallon of water per day per consumption, food preparation, and hygiene. NASA says the new system works to collect wastewater and moisture released into the cabin air from astronauts' breath and sweat and treat it <laughs> and process it into clean, potable water. Scientists say it's been carefully tested and has been proven reliable. NASA says the process is similar to some city water distribution systems on Earth, but far superior. I don't know about far superior. <laughs> <laughs> Those NASA guys, they know what they're doing. They so. are smart, and I don't want to say anything bad about science or scientists, <laughs> no. but I could have gone the rest of my life right. without knowing about <laughs> that. I'm still scarred. You remember Waterworld and Kevin Costner? Oh, Waterworld, yes. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember Waterworld. <laughs> this is, uh, I'm telling you what, knowing this, I mean, I didn't even think about that. They do need water, but I say send more Mitch. Can we just send them with more gallons yeah, of water? Yeah, I want like, more we'll missions from Earth. Leave a crew Spring member me here and re replace them with more water. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think NASA would be offended. I would to think hear about that every things. time that I started to drink, though. But probably I would be more focused on well, being in space. Well, I mean, but, let's be like, yeah. people, if you were in the desert dying of thirst, you're going to do whatever you need to survive. So I guess so. I don't know about all that. Mm, we'll I'm, see. Thank God for smart people, though. <laughs> yeah. That's it for. WGXA News at 5.30. We invite you to join us at 6 on ABC 16. Stay cool this evening, Middle Georgia.